Hey, 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 it's your girl Evelyn and I am back with another video. And in today's video, I decided that I wanted to kind of break down my kind of like 2020, 2021 project of what I call curating my beauty. And I know you guys have seen the hauls and things like that. And that's a portion of it. But there's a there's a deeper uh, meaning experience that came along with that. So let me listen, grab a cup of tea. OK, because this might be a little bit of a chatty video. I don't know. I'm gonna try to keep it at a reasonable time. But let me give you some backstory. So when I was in college, first of all, I went to a HBCU. So let's let's just let's just start right there. OK, and I definitely was a part of the culture that like going to class was a fashion show. Like I definitely was not um, a baseball cap and sweatshirts and tennis shoes in class kind of girl. That was not me. Um, that probably wasn't the majority of the campus. Yes, did I have those moments at home? Sure, but that that I wouldn't say that that defined my style. And, you know, after I got out of college, you know, I started working and then I had a work uniform uh, because I was working in manufacturing. And so, you know, it was like hair nets and goggles and steel toe boots and earplugs. And it was just a whole thing. Right. And so I remember working and uh, we had to wear like polo shirts and khakis, which I, I can't stand. OK, let me just let me just let me just tell you right now, I can't stand it. And I remember trying to find ways to spruce up <laughs> my work uniform. Like I remember ordering these like custom colorful safety goggles just to have a little color. So while everybody else had clear, I had like pink and purple and orange. And because I worked in manufacturing and in food manufacturing, I couldn't wear nail polish. And you couldn't wear jewelry because it couldn't you didn't you couldn't get it into food and you had to wear a hairnet. So like my face would be beat and snatched. You hear me? Like I was coming to work at nine o'clock at night with a full face of makeup. Okay. Because I needed to be fully expressed and my job didn't really allow me to do that. And I was working overnight at the time when I first got out of college and it was just a whole mess. And so fast forward, I ended up moving to the company's headquarters, which was like business attire, business casual ish um and so I loved it I mean I was in dresses and skirts and all of that right but then I decided to go to culinary school and I entered a career field that was even more regulated about what you wore so at this point now I'm in skid you know free shoes probably steel toed you know chef pants chef jacket hair pulled up obviously you don't want hair in the food no jewelry, uh, you know, no nail polish, you know, some kind of hairnet or hat or something working in food. And I was just like, I just remember being like, I just want to wear some nail polish. I remember that just being like a thing. I remember I had bought this color. I think it was from Essie. This is years ago, but I remember the name of the color because I hardly got to wear it. It was called Pinkalicious. Okay. And I remember like, I bought it and I was like, okay, well, on the two days that I'm off, I'm going to paint my nails and then I'll just, you know, take it off and go to work. And this went on for years and I never actually got around to doing it. I never got around to doing it. And that's when I was like, I, I got to do something different with my life. I, like, I know you're probably like, Evelyn, it's not that serious, but that, that nail polish represented to me a life that I didn't have that I wanted. Okay, I promise this is all going to make sense when it comes together. And so um, I remember, you know, life happens, things happen, and just really struggling with, you know, anxiety and stress and different things. And, you know, you know, life happened. And I found that my personal style had started diminishing over time. Um, I found that my love for, you know, makeup and hair and beauty had kind of taken a back seat. And I'm not going to act like I was around here looking bummy. I wasn't. I was not around here looking crazy. But you know how you know how you like to look? Like what makes you feel good? Like what your standard is? Like what your minimum is? And I definitely was not living up to that. And I went through a season where I had a lot of friends who 
didn't really value beauty much, right? You know, they were big into comfort, which I think comfort and beauty can coexist. But, you know, their preference was definitely comfort. They weren't really into hair, makeup, uh, you know, they, they, they just weren't into that, right? And so I found myself, not intentionally, not even consciously, but over time, starting to dull myself down to kind of blend in. I didn't even realize it was happening until one day I looked up and I was like, I don't even look like myself. You know what I mean? And so I remember, y'all, this is going to sound so bad. So when I say this, y'all, like we family, right? Like, so I don't say this in an arrogant way. And I think for the people who get it, get it. If you don't get it, you don't get it. I felt like I couldn't really be as pretty as I wanted to be. And what I mean by that is not as, not as, when I say not as pretty as I wanted to be like, like I, I felt like I didn't have the luxury to really enhance myself the way I wanted to, right? To dress all the time, the way I wanted to dress, to look the way I wanted to look all the time, to wear makeup the way I wanted to when I wanted to, the hair look, I felt like it would be too much. So this wasn't about not having the funds. This wasn't about um, not thinking that I was attractive. This was about like, if I really look the way I want to look on a regular basis, is it going to be too much for people? Is it, is it, you know, is it going, to, are people going to say stuff all the time? Is it going to be, um, why, you know, why are you always doing the most? Right. And so, um, and so I shied away from that. So I had to do a lot of mindset work around allowing myself to be pretty. I, this, I, I hope this makes sense, but I promise you it's, it's, it's not as vain as it sounds. And so I remember I went through this phase of having to convince myself that it was okay to embrace my beauty. And I remember, you know, being in prayer one time and God was like, you know, beauty is a tool that that I've given you and given lots of people. Um, Use it, you know, like, don't don't you love it when you look out and you see the terrain and you see the ocean or the stars or flowers? He was like, I could have made all those things the same color. I could have made them all look the same. Um, but the beauty was a bonus and even so much so that like, you know, certain flowers have certain colors and and look a certain way because their beauty will attract the bee, right. To pollinate it, or it'll attract the insect or it'll, or, or whatever it needs to do. Right. And so that was the first time I really thought about that beauty had a purpose. It had a tool and that it was okay for me to lean into that and uh, embrace that and be thankful for that gifting and not make it wrong or make it bad or make it shallow. And so the first phase of curating my beauty was even allowing myself to not feel bad for wanting to focus on that area. Because, you know, we definitely hear, um, you know, it's what... What's on inside is what matters the most. And listen, I agree. It is what matters the most, but it's not the only thing that matters. And I think about this in regards to food, right? And I think this is this is a perfect example that I can make the most delicious food, but if it looks unappetizing, either you're not going to eat it or you're really, really going to struggle to want to take a bite. And now you may eat more once you realize how delicious it is, but that, but getting you to even try it, you're going to be like, I don't, I, I don't want to eat that. Like, it don't look good. You know, I remember there was this episode of the Cosby show, obviously years ago, but Vanessa had brought home dabness and she was engaged, but remember she didn't tell her parents. And so I remember Cliff, told him it's like it's not that we don't like you I mean I think they did say we don't like you they were like it's the way she presented you it's the way she brought you home and he was saying it was like it was like your favorite meal you know steak and asparagus and this right he was like served up on a garbage can lid and he was talking about the presentation and so I never forgot that so I definitely agree with the mindset that you know what matters most is what's on the inside, but I think I needed to add the caveat, but it's not the only thing that matters. 
Now, conversely, I could make the most beautiful plate of food and it'd be styled and photo ready. And if it doesn't taste good, you're not going to want to eat it again either. Right. And so, but imagine if I made something that was just amazingly delicious and it also was appeasing to the eyes, you're going to be hooked. Right. And so when I thought about it like that, beauty is a tool, you know, we think about that with packaging, right? You know, some of us are a sucker for packaging. Yes, we want the product inside to be good. And there's a lot of brands that make really good products and their packaging is, but don't let the product be amazing and the packaging being bomb. Listen. And so I, that was, that was when I started to really say, okay, it's okay that you have this desire to embrace this side of yourself, to cultivate this side of yourself, to curate this side of yourself. And I had let it slip because, yes, I was receiving messages that, you know, it wasn't important and only vain people did it and all of these things that weren't helpful. So fast forward, okay, to 2019, 2020, 2021. Um, Actually, there's a video where I'm talking about like how I wanted to like curate my makeup collection and all that because I definitely had let the way I want to look go by the wayside. And so I remember praying about it. And I, I, to be honest, y'all, I'm gonna be honest. I really felt like God was on my back about it. And I was like, this, first of all, I convinced myself that that could not be God because beauty wasn't spiritual enough. Right. And I remember, you know, being in prayer time, being in my devotion one day journaling. And what came to me was, is that the beauty was about congruency that I felt like what God was saying to me was you need to look on the outside that your outside needs to reflect the work that I've done on you on the inside and that got me um it makes me a little a little emotional that you know God was like, I, that, I made you beautiful for a reason. Um, and I need you to be a good steward over that as well. Just like you have to be a good steward over your health or your relationships or your finances. Um, I have blessed you with this and uh, I want you to, I want you to enjoy it and be a good steward. Which is the same way you enjoy the beauty of flowers. Yes, do they have a function, but you also enjoy their beauty. Right. And so, you know, it really hit home when it was like needing to reflect on the outside to be congruent with the transformation that has happened on the inside. And y'all, that got me. And I so I went on a journey of kind of rediscovering, you know, my signature look, you know, what kind of products I like, what I wanted to look like. And I, I mean, I turned it into a project. It was a project like I. I kind of almost created like a course for myself, if you will, like with, you know, check-in points and checklists and parameters about, you know, my hair, my makeup, my skincare, my wardrobe, my environment, right? Like even curating the beauty around me, what I wanted my nails to look like. And then, you know, uh, like I created this whole system and it was interesting because I was like, well, God, this could get really expensive. And he was like, listen, um... I'm going for the bill y'all. And what was crazy is like, it was almost like the more I bought, the more money I made. I like, and I'm not trying to make this like prosperity gospel or about consumerism because y'all know how I feel about that. But like he indeed footed the bill and I have seen how I feel differently now that I have allowed myself to lean into cultivating and curating my beauty And, you know, somewhere somebody made it wrong for me Uh, and maybe for you, too, that or or but or you could be cute enough, but don't be too pretty. You know, don't 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 be that together. You know, you you still got to look a little raggedy. You know, you still got to, you know, you, you like don't overdo it. And I just made a commitment to myself that I said, I am going to allow myself to be as pretty on the inside and on the outside as I desire to be. And, you know, whether that's my environment, whether that's my wardrobe, whether that's my 
makeup, hair, my signature look, all of that. I went through like developing my signature style, my signature makeup look. This is my signature makeup look, by the way. Like if I only had one makeup look to wear for the rest of my life, it would be this. It would be these colors. I would look like this every day. When I don't know what to do for makeup, this is the look that I do. So I tell people I don't have an everyday makeup look. I have a signature makeup look. And this is this is my signature makeup look. But um, getting to that place. And it's interesting because, um, you know, I've had people around me that I've shared with it, like asked me to share with them, like the process that I've gone through and the resources that I've used and all that kind of stuff to help them kind of get back on the bandwagon with, you know, embracing their pretty and cultivating their beauty as well um, for as long as we can. And so, you know, I don't know who this video was for. I, you know, to some people it may seem trivial, to some people it may seem arrogant, to some people it may seem shallow, but I think if it was for you, it was for you. I, I definitely know that it was a real internal battle and trying to figure out like, how did I get here? Why did I believe that? Why did I make wanting to embrace my beauty wrong? And when I say beauty, I, I mean how I like to look, right? So I'm not saying like, oh, you have to look like this or you have to do this or whatever. It's like every woman has her own version of beautiful and lean into that and embrace that. And there is no limit to how pretty you can be for you, whatever that needs to be. Or if you're a woman who you're like, I don't really care about that. That's fine too. But I, but decide for yourself, decide for yourself. You know, if, if, if this video doesn't resonate with you, that's fine. But if it does, don't make it wrong. Lean into that. Um, it's so funny because I like one of my friends was like, you should make this into like a chorus or an ebook or something. And I was like, girl, maybe one day because it, it was really a process like and then, you know, the purging and the shopping and the I mean, it was a project. And while most of it was enjoyable, there definitely got to a point where I was like, I just kind of want this to be over. But but once I realized that it wasn't just it wasn't about vanity. It was about congruency. Like I that's the I think that's the point that I want to drive home. It was about congruency that reflecting on the outside the woman that I am on the inside. And when I got that, like, yeah. So anyway, this video has run along. And let me know, have you fallen by the wayside or have you let people can, or the world convince you that, you know, embracing your pretty is wrong or uh, shallow or let me know what were your biggest takeaway from this video. I kind of want us to dialogue in the comment section. I just don't feel like I'm alone in this. Like, I feel like there are other women who can resonate with this. And so if that's you, girl, let's chat in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Peace.